NVIDIA. It is the stock story of a century. The chip maker is at the heart of the artificial intelligence boom, supplying the chips needed to build and run AI applications like ChatGPT. And amid sky-high expectations, it reported another blowout quarter, forecasting sales that surpassed Wall Street estimates for the third time in a row. Revenue more than doubling to $13.5 billion, $6 billion in pure profit. That is a staggering 843% jump year over year. It's a wow moment. It's a superhero number. I mean, clearly, you know, nobody's having a problem paying the prices that NVIDIA is charging for these parts. All driven by unprecedented demand for those AI chips, as revenue for its data center segment climbed 141% just from the last quarter. Now, all of this comes on the back of an already explosive run up in the stock, quadrupling this year and driving it to a trillion dollar market cap. A company that is absolutely dominating in the AI sea change. But are the cracks in that dominance already beginning to show? What's next and who is next? They are not going to be the only game in town forever. And you have to be realistic that competition is okay. coming. We think that there could be some disruption uh, if we think three, five years out. This week on Tech Check, we take a look at some of the players, big and small, looking to dethrone the king of AI. The key to NVIDIA's dominance is its ecosystem that has made it a one-stop shop for all things AI, from top of the line hardware, the chips that customers wait a year and a half just to get their hands on, to a software layer designed to keep customers within its system, to specialized computers, even computing services. And though still far from challenging NVIDIA's supremacy, competition is beginning to emerge, looking to penetrate any one of those layers. Can I say one thing that I think is super important on this? Yeah. Competition's coming, guys. Let's take software first, a key factor in NVIDIA's competitive advantage. Their programming platform, CUDA, lets developers speed up their applications, except it works with NVIDIA chips and NVIDIA chips only. And that synergy has driven more than 4 million developers, 40 million downloads to its platform. They also have a, a basically a modeling language that goes along with the chips. This is, think about uh, what Apple and Tesla have done so well, vertical integrations. This isn't just a chip company. There's effectively a coding language around it. And I think that that is one of the reasons why developers want to develop on NVIDIA GPUs. To further Gene's point, that software is it transferable. It's a walled garden, exactly, just like Apple. But now a number of startups, they're working to break into that part of the ecosystem. Modular, for example, is developing an alternative to CUDA, which would free up developers to use other non-NVIDIA chips that might be cheaper or more accessible. I think what it will do is it will expand the pie. What Modular is doing is it's building a unifying technology that allows people to invest their knowledge in Python and then scale it into AI applications, into production, into accelerators like GPUs, and have one thing that works better instead of a whole bunch of things that kind of sort of can work if you're an expert on all of them. Modular just received $100 million in new funding from General Catalyst, Google Ventures, among others. And its CEO tells me that there are thousands of companies that want to use their product, but he wouldn't name or say if anyone's actually paying for it yet, a sign perhaps of optimism in the space, but also how far there still is to go. Other startups focus on software and hardware like NVIDIA, but they're trying to make it cheaper. Rain Neuromorphics with $64 million in equity funding and Dmatrix with $51 million, they're both developing a chip and software combo that they say generate less heat and therefore require less cooling, making them more cost and energy efficient. On the hardware front, dominance may be an understatement. By one estimate, NVIDIA has a 90% market share for AI-related GPUs, that is graphics processing units. Those are the computer chips that are essential to the shift in AI. Unlike standard microprocessors, which perform calculations one by one, GPUs have the horsepower to do them all at once. It's like waiting in line for a ride. That's the way I was trying to think upstairs. Like, how can I describe it? Waiting in line, CPUs, you have to wait for the next one, and then you can you know, run that uh, compute. Whereas parallel processing, it all happens at the exact same time. The high costs and technical complexities of entering this space, that gives NVIDIA a huge advantage. At least a dozen startups have tried to take on NVIDIA in AI chips. Two are now shut down, one filed for bankruptcy, another just ran out of money. A few survived that shakeout, and they're still hoping to capitalize on customers looking for alternatives, especially amid an NVIDIA bottleneck in supply with chips that are cheaper and available now. 
Cerebra Systems has been around since 2015 and makes large-scale AI chips that are almost 60 times larger than NVIDIA's biggest GPUs. One expert said the $4 billion startup is the only one that's able to compete with NVIDIA in data center training. Another in the hardware space is Samba Nova, a SoftBank-backed AI chip company founded in 2017 with its own custom silicon that has also raised at a multi-billion dollar valuation. Then there are the big players, big tech. The biggest threat to sales might be cloud service providers like Google and Amazon, which are both making their own custom silicon internally and renting them out to outside developers. The entire world would like more uh, chips for doing uh, generative AI, uh, and whether that's uh, GPUs or whether that's uh, you know, Amazon's own uh, chips that we're designing. AWS has been slower to get a start in this race, launching its first AI-focused chips in 2018, but analysts say the company does have a big leg up given its dominance in customers and cloud. Plus, an AWS executive has said pricing is the one place NVIDIA has left a lot of room for others to compete, arguing that its own AI chips are a bargain compared to NVIDIA's. Google, meanwhile, has been working on its own custom chips for almost a decade now, and in April said its fourth generation of chips are faster and more power efficient than comparable NVIDIA chips. Microsoft is also reportedly working on producing its own custom silicon with chipmaker AMD, which brings us to who is said to be NVIDIA's closest rival and most likely to catch up. AMD has its own line of AI processors, plus deep relationships with big data centers. The company has ramped up its AI chip production this year, and CEO Lisa Su said its newest chip will have more memory than any current NVIDIA chip. A shift in the cycle, too, could give competitors a much-needed opening. Generative AI is going from something called training to inference. Training is building a model like ChatGPT and feeding it all the data. Developers need the huge compute power that NVIDIA's chips have for that. But inference is when the model starts thinking for itself. It's able to answer your questions and can be developed using other chips. Though NVIDIA released its new Grace Hopper 200 chips designed for inference earlier this month, it doesn't have the huge lead that it has had in training. And it's already facing competition from well-capitalized rivals like AWS's Inferentia and Google's TPUs. Of course, NVIDIA is king for a reason. Jensen Huang thinks ahead, and he's not one to take this wave of competition sitting down. Everybody's making their own in-house inference chip, which definitely could be competition, but again, it won't run to the same caliber as NVIDIA's GPU. NVIDIA has been partnering with its own competitors, including Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta for years, making sure they rely on NVIDIA for these chips. It's harder to find a big tech player that isn't friendly with NVIDIA. Perhaps more tellingly, NVIDIA has also been helping startups that aren't trying to develop their own AI chips, like CoreWeave and Lambda Labs. NVIDIA gave those startups early access to its H100s, essentially limiting how many chips AWS, Google, and Microsoft can buy, and shoring up that protective moat it spent decades building.